Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to look at in this video is the Grandstream GWN 7801 P, and I need to introduce you to these switches a little bit more than the last video before we get to our video series. This is an eight port switch, non rack mountable. It is not wide enough to fit in a 19 inch rack, but let's uh, pop it open. It's got eight PoE ports. Let's see what comes in the box. And you know, I'm not a, a real big unboxer. You get your installation guide, and this goes over everything. Uh, from installing the rack ears, going into the console, tells you what all the LED indicators mean. It tells you how to, to ground the device. Um, really gives you everything you need to get started. Yeah, and uh, for this model, you would have to use the, uh, the wall mounting instructions because unless you had a small equipment rack, but... I don't know many people with those running around, but it does happen. So, of course, we get the switch. And these are these are good-looking switches, in my opinion. Um, so you've got eight ports right here. Then you've got two SFP ports. You've got a console port. On that side, you can see where the rack ears go. On the back, we've got a standard power uh, cable. Oh, there's also a grounding lug. And then on this side, you have a Kensington lock. So that's that's the switch. And then in the package, we get grounding cable, power cable, and plastic feet for the bottom, uh, rubber feet for the bottom, and also those mounting ears. So... I know there's a firmware update available for this, so let's do this. I'm going to rearrange some things on the desk, um, and we're going to get this fired up. We'll be right back. All right, so while we're waiting for the switch to boot up, we're going to head on over to firmware.grandstream.com, and we're going to grab this latest firmware. So uh, we'll have it all ready to go when we get into the switch. All right, so this is the first time I've logged into this switch. Now, the username is always going to be admin, but uh, the way that Grandstream handles default passwords is there's a sticker on the bottom of the device, and that's where your default password is. So I had to take a picture of that because uh, they're not always easy to remember. So I'm going to type it in here. All right, we're going to log in. And let's see, I don't know if there doesn't look like there's a wizard. Okay, so we're still rolling with the default password. But before we get into everything else, yeah, we could reboot or change the password there. But what I want to do is I want to do an upgrade. Oh, we can upgrade via the network. Or we can select um, a file. That's fantastic. So let's try. Let's try. We'll save that. I don't know if I needed to click OK there or save or whatever. But now we're going to click Detect Upgrade. And we're going to see what happens. Detecting. Okay, detected new firmware 1.0.1.30. So I downloaded it, but we can also do it this way. So I'm going to say download and upgrade. And we're going to get this confirmation. It says downloading firmware, uploading firmware, do not power off switch. So I'm going to let this go and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so the download and then the upload of the firmware took about a minute minute and a half maybe, and now the actual upgrade is happening. So uh, we will let this upgrade and we'll be right back. All right, so the upgrade took about another minute, and now it's re re rebooting, rebooting, and it says to...
please log in in a few minutes. Usually Grandstream gives you something specific, like try again in two minutes. So I'm going to just wait about another minute and then see if we can log in. All right, total upgrade time, less than five minutes. Now I do have gigabit internet here, so uh, my download uh, probably went pretty fast. Um, so just a warning on that. And so now we're going to get logged in. And uh, because of the video series that's coming up, I'm not going to put a static IP on this yet. That's coming in a video series. But what we are going to do is we're going to change the name because I have a feeling this shows up uh, probably in uh, uh, GDMS Cloud or GWN Cloud. It probably shows up in SNMP, all that good stuff. So I'm going to call this... Um, Grandstream dash eight dash WH. Uh, required characters. Uh, doesn't like the hyphen. So you're going to have to watch out for that. Liked the underscores. So we'll save that. Then the other thing I'm going to do is I am going to change this password and I'm going to make it the regular lab password that we use, which those of you who have been with me for a while, you've always heard me talk about the lab password yet. Nobody knows exactly what it is. And I'm not telling, even if you guess it, I'm not telling. And just because of working on Grandstream PBXs, I'm so used to making sure I hit that blue button. All right, so here's the other thing um, I want to show you. So I thought I had plugged into port one for the uplink, but you can see I'm very clearly plugged into port two. So for whatever reason, the switch is the port one is the bottom left instead of the top left, which I would have expected this to be zero or one. I would not have expected this to be one and then two, three, four, five. So that's just a minor thing. Grandstream didn't ask me, but I thought I would um, put that out there while I was talking. All right, so our PoE here, we can do max 30 watts per port. You can see right now we're not doing any PoE. Uh, jumble, jum, jumble, jumbo frames are at 9216. Uh, the... The firmware for this, the 1.0.1.30, I've asked for clarification on what miscellaneous internal fixes means because if it was something with security or whatever, I would really like to know. Um, and when you go and you download the firmware, you'll see those fixes that they that they had. But yeah, so back to the, the port info. And when you click on the port, it brings up everything about that port. I can come in here. I can edit uh, the port description. I can mess with the speed and the duplex. Now, unless you've got switches that cannot auto uh, negotiate that, you should leave, leave these on auto unless somebody tells you to change those. Uh, I'm going to say uplink to network. Let's see if it's going to let me have spaces. Nope. So I'm just going to call it... Uplink, save that. I'm really excited for what's going to come out of these these switches. So um, here is our our overview of everything. So you can see that uh, I'm got it got it plugged in here. And that's our uplink. We can mess with the jumbo frames. So jumbo frames video coming soon because there's some things I want to talk about because I have people who just go and they turn on jumbo frames and they don't know if it's working or why it should be working or whatever. So I'm going to do a video on that. That's on the list. Once again, we've got our flow statistics so we can see everything going uh, on with the port as far as counters go. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've got port auto recovery and a few of these are going to be important uh, like the STP uh, B, BPDU guard and the port loop and the port security um, going to be very important in our upcoming videos. Then we've got our lags. So we can do eight lags. 
LACP MAC address table. I was just telling somebody the other day that I use MAC address tables, ARP tables a lot in troubleshooting, a lot. Here's our VLAN setup again. Port settings, port members, voice VLAN, and our OUIs. And you can see that Grandstream has preloaded their OUIs, the MAC addresses that they are assigned um, to, um, you know, so we can do auto voice, which you're going to see. You're going to see that happen on this switch in our series of upcoming videos. We've got our spanning tree settings. If you only have um, one switch. So this is something else that I've got. I need to go back. I did a spanning tree video a few years ago. I need to update that um, for like single switch. How many switches deep should you go? All right, here's multicast. So you can see that Grandstream put a lot of time into making sure that the switches could handle multicast. And it's really important because once you hit, um, I think the limit on a Grandstream UCM in a page group, it's either 40 or 50 devices. So when you're in doing schools and hotels and all of this, you hit that limit very, very quickly. So multicast paging uh, becomes super, super important. We've got our PoE. So all eight interfaces are PoE. We've got 120 watts of... Um, total POE uh, power available. And I'm not sure what the remaining, this has got an asterisk, not sure. I'm going to have to look this up and see exactly what that means. And then you can see the status of the POE on all of your interfaces here. Quality of service. I mean, Grandstream came loaded for bear with these switches. So you can do port priority, you can do um, DSCP or COS or IP mapping, which I kind of like. We're going to play with all of these uh, and kind of get really in depth with these. You got queue scheduling, queue shaping, which is fantastic. And then you've got that rate limiting, right? Where I can change uh, the rate limit of the port to only allow so much ingress, out, ingress, egress, outgress, what the? Ingress, egress. Uh, in KBPS, capital K. All right, under security, storm control, we've got port security. This is the same stuff that was in the switches the last time uh, that we took a look, but I'm just trying to see if there's anything that's sticking out like a sore thumb that maybe they, uh, they changed in this latest firmware. But port security, you are going to see us configure this and when we start talking about best practices for security in our upcoming uh, series. So access control list. Like I said, if you're going to configure ACLs, make sure you are on the network in the building, have access to the switch, because if you don't understand how to configure ACLs, you will lock yourself out of the switch at least once. And in fact, if you haven't locked yourself self out of a switch, are you even learning anything? Right? We got IP uh, source guard, anti-attack, so we can turn on all these things. We've got our DAI, radius, AAA, 802.1x, DHCP snooping. So they've got a lot of things built into the security. And then back to our maintenance. So here's that, that upgrade. I've got that uh, set to the URL. So for diagnostics, we've got logs, ping, trace route, mirroring, and fiber module. That's kind of cool. Um, the ping, traceroute, mirroring, we're going to use those extensively. And, of course, you know how much I, I love logs. And it looks like this is keeping fantastic information in the logs. In fact, we'll have to poke around and see if we can bump that up a little bit. We've got our backup and our restore, so we can back up the running configuration. And I wonder if this actually stores it on the switch. Oh, it does. So it's stored on the switch. I can download it. I can restore to it or I can delete it. That is fantastic. I can upload a configuration file and I can back up saved configurations. So probably whatever I've got down here, I can back up. That's awesome. 
All right, SNMP, all the usual things here. Somebody the other day said SNMP has been um, – SNMP had been um, depreciated, and I think they just meant on Windows or something. But um, Armon LLDP LLDP MED, so LLDP is enabled. So we will be using LLDP when we do our videos. We've got our time settings, which I need to uh, get updated there. So we'll do an NTP server. So let's do uh, NTP.UI. U C that's the uh, university of Illinois Urbana Champaign. And this is the national supercomputing laboratory. And we are going to look for our time zone. We'll go ahead and save that and save that. And then we'll see if we can figure out under where was that at diagnostic, our log file. Did it say anything about that? Nope, not yet. All right, so then uh, we've got our login services. So this is our management IP, which uh, we're going to be doing VLAN configurations on this and the whole bit. This is just another quick, brief overview because this will be uh, the primary switch for the next uh, video series. So we can select our different VLANs there. And then, of course, you've got access control. Telnet should not even be an option. SSH is enabled. And then I can come in and add different users and give them monitor or operator. So those are your, your two levels of security. And real quick, I want to see. Yep, so now we've got the correct date and time, and that looks good. So big things come in here with the video series that I'm working on. Uh, Grandstream switches, heavy in it, Synology heavy in it. Let me know what you want to see on these switches because I'm probably going to start breaking down uh, some of these other configuration things. Instead of doing one great big huge video, I'll probably go down the um, down the, the list of configuration options and I will probably do smaller videos based on that. In fact, I could probably get a bunch of those done before I start the actual video series because the video series is going to be a lot of videos as well. So um, let me know down in the comments what you want to see out of these switches. And please like this video if you liked it. Subscribe, comment, share, follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below, along with our affiliate links, Patreon link, and the link to willyhow.com. You can go over there if you need IT consulting, whether it's networking, voice over IP, security, if we can't handle it, we'll get you to somebody who can. Click hire us or contact us, fill that information out, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.